Hi, this is Shaman Weaver, Sheila Baker. It's midsummer, so the middle of July. And if you haven't, uh, hmm, if you haven't figured out something new to do this summer, I really invite you to. So, uh, as a young child, five, I had a near drowning. And so this particular summer is going to be the summer where I overcome my fear of water. So this is it. Uh, and I was out maybe 20 feet off the, um, uh, the edge of a lake and I'm learning to paddleboard. So um, let's overcome our fears. Let's do something new and let's have the most amazing summer. My daughter said to me recently, you know, if you're lucky, you get 65 great summers. So let's go ahead and make this the best one. So hi Heidi, hi Sadna, um, Chelsea, nice to see you, Melissa, sweet, and Susie, how's it going? Um, how about that Maury getting married, eh? Yay! Okay, so Heidi, this one is for you. Oh, Beautiful. So, um, death. In order for any of us to uh, go through change, hey, Gypsy, hey, Michael, in order for any of us to go through change, we have to be willing to let something die. Okay. And as we do that, the rebirthing can happen. So if you think about the goddess Isis, she's about birth, death, and rebirth. And so this says that something is falling away. It no longer serves you, Heidi. Oftentimes we think about death as, oh, I'm going to have, this is um, bad on my heart. But this said, it's not serving you. So you may feel um, yeah, you may feel some um, some bad on your heart, some sadness, but it, it's it's time for a rebirthing here. So there you go, beautiful card. And um, as always, when um, when you get an important card, and this reason that this is important is its major arcana, God, Goddess, the big chicken in the sky is attempting to get a message across. So. Um, as you see these, then by all means, go and find this card online, print it out in black, enlarge it, print it out in black and white and color it, um, and let the rebirthing happen. Let that fall away. Hey, Siobhan, nice to see you, Donna. Hi, Amy. Oh, exactly. Hi, I love it when it fits. So um, thanks for letting me know that. Sadna, this one is for you. Oh, okay, a nine. You're complete with this. You're finished. You're over it. Um, and it's one, so it's passion, fire, drive, connection to the divine. There's lots of new growth going on. You've been through some trials. They're behind you. Let them stay there. You know, there was a wonderful woman, well, she was kind of a curmudgeon, but she wrote a book called Excuse Me, Your Life is Waiting, and her, um, Lynn Grabhorn is her name, and what she said is if you can hold the energy, the up energy, the powerful, intense, whoa, energy, for 16 seconds, you can manifest. Now, we can go back 10 years and recount, recount, say that, recount a sad story, a bad story, a terrible story over in detail. And we can't even hold energy for 16 seconds for the bliss that we want. How wacky is that? So it's behind you. Leave it there. The only wounding that you have is a wounding in the head. It's um, You may be, like I said, ruminating on it, going over and over. Let it be in the past. And that's that's also good and wonderful for all of us. So there you go. Gulam, nice to see you. Chris, hi. And Keely, hello. Okay. Cindy, this one is for you. 
Mm. Pentacles, money, property, tangible things. Uh, pages or messengers. They used to run from one village to the other, telling them, look out, the king is coming. Put away all your virgins and get out your food. So, um, so the page says that there's a message coming. It could come through a young person, um, perhaps not, but it's about the practical world. So look for that. There you go. Hey, Carol. Chelsea, this one is for you. Ah, the Hermit, Major Arcana. So information uh, attempted to get through to you. So this says it's time for you to take time by yourself. So I haven't done this for a while, but um, uh, what I would do is I would close the blinds. I would unplug all of my electronics. I would start on Friday night. This was back in my working world, um, which is uh, next month, 21 years ago since I quit my day job. Yahoo to that. So, but the, what what I would do, blinds closed, electronics off, and I would sit. Um, I would have all my food taken care of. Maybe I would go for a walk. But it's really time for you to look deeply within. So, um, so Chelsea, just uh, find some time some time to do that. If you can't devote an entire weekend, three hours. You know, like just go out for a walk and. Um, and walk, stop for tea, you know, really, um, the hermit is about self, uh, self knowledge. And I talked about that earlier in enlightened spiritual warriors on the teaching that I did today is that um, self reliance is important, we need to know ourselves well enough to be able to rely on ourselves. So Melissa, I'm going over here on the other side, this one is for you. Ooh, contentment, absolute contentment. But Melissa, there's more. So I'm going to put it up here. Look how this person is sitting. Their arms are crossed. They're content. But the thing that, um, that there's 10 cups. They only have nine. So it's good enough. But is it really? So. Here's a wonderful thing that you want to do when you see yourself with your arms closed. You just open your arms. I open fully to give and receive love. I open fully to give and receive love. And let that be your mantra because there's more. There's one more. You're on nine. That's completion, contentment, but there's more. So um, open your arms to receive there, girl. All right, Susie, this one is for you. Ah, the Knight of Swords, some new idea. The thing about this is that he moves really swiftly. He moves so swiftly that sometimes he forgets to notice where he's putting his feet and he trods on things. So the caution with this particular knight is to go, Whoa, slow down a second. Let's just communicate because he has ideas for sure, lots of them to share with you. So, um, but you know, maybe get him to get off his horse for a second, have a, a drink with you. That would be fun. All right. Okay, and this one is for you. Oh, the Ten of Pentacles, money, property, tangible things. This is having enough abundance, fecundity on all planes, okay? Mostly on the physical plane that you can pass on a legacy. So I'm going to put this up close and you can see that the old man is touching the dog. The little boy way over here is also touching the dog as well as the couple who is touching. So everybody is touching here. So your ability with your practical world experience and um, it could even be that there's an inheritance involved with this. Um, you'll know that you have enough to pass on to others. What a beautiful feeling. Mm -hmm. And to be able to actually take care of yourself. So Gypsy, this one is for you. Oh, beautiful. So the moon. If things have been crazy emotionally um, and um, 
Hmm. Not just emotionally, but, but things moving around. If they've been like that, know that within the next moon cycle, they're going to settle down. So the dogs will stop being at the moon, the crawfish will go back in. But right now is a tumultuous time. So just be in the flow of all of that. So there you go. That's lovely. There you go. Tora, nice to see you. Michael, this one is for you. Patience. <laughs> Patience in the physical world. So you have laid a foundation. You have seeded some things. And what... Um, ah, what it's going to require, because only one of them is ready to um, to harvest just yet. The other six still require some tending. So whatever it is that you are um, you're working on right now in the practical world, it's going to require just a little more patience. And also, you know, sometimes we just need to leave things well enough alone. So not only is there patience required, but there's also um, a little bit of a hands off. So I'm not quite sure what that means for you, but I'm pretty sure you'll know. So hey, Sarah, nice to see you. Oh, Siobhan, this one is for you. Will you turn off the lights? So uh, fulfillment. Okay. I have to turn them back on again. So I was getting a reflection in my eyes, so I asked Anita to turn off the lights. But now we're back in the light. Okay, Siobhan, the Ten of Cups. Remember a few minutes ago, maybe you were here, maybe you weren't, where uh, there was contentment in the Nine of Cups. The Ten of Cups is all about happy, happy, joy, joy, blissfulness, which honestly does not come from anywhere but within so a while back i'll give you a, a little um personal tip here a while back things were chaotic and tumultuous and i wasn't generating the kind of income that i wanted and so i um i started thinking i, was, I started feeling frustrated and annoyed and what the hey and all of that and then well, I realized after some soul searching that hmm I believe we're all here to live in bliss right uh-huh you all have heard me say that and if I was attaching my bliss to money that was uh, you know I had an aha moment and I went, oh, if I'm attaching my bliss to my income and my ability to generate money, then I'm always going to be going like this because there's always improvement, right? Right. And you can always um, enjoy more. This card says, find your bliss which comes from the heart. So as soon as I had that little aha moment, I went, well, this is ridiculous, but look at the silly stuff we hide from, from ourselves, right? That wasn't, I would never have outed myself on that. I would have never said my bliss is generated to dollar signs. And when I figured that out, I could have a little talk to myself and just say, are you sure? So it was a wonderful experience. And, you know, now my bliss is attached to being able to talk to you all about cards and to do teachings and to share my experience with you so that you can have the joy and bliss that you want. So there you go. Yes, happy Wednesday, Monica. Nice to see you. Donna, this one is for you. Ah, oh, so... This is a spirally major arcana, first of all. So divinity is attempting to get a message across. So what we're having here is we're having a spiraling in because that's what we do. And then when we learn something, just like I talked about just a moment ago, so I spiraled in deeply and then I had my, oh, and then I could spiral back out into the world and share with you what I learned, my experience. So Donna, 
there will be times when the when the wheel turns in a certain direction an inward direction and there will also be times when it spirals out once again so when you know that and you are not attached to it so, oh it's got to be only spiraling in or only spiraling out you're in flow so this is the card of flow so there you go, Donna. It's all about the flow. Okay, Amy. Um, Amy Domris, this is for you. You are carrying some other people's burdens. You probably already knew that, but nobody maybe had told you. So when I see this card, what I know is that, first of all, it's wands. It's passion, fire, drive, connection to the divine. And it's look i'm going to put it up close over here so look big um beefy thighs and over here lovely biceps can do the job but they're not all your burdens hi nyan so it's not it's not your burdens and i'm going to give all of us a tip when we carry someone else's burdens they don't get the little poke. They don't get the nudge. They get a wham in the nose because they didn't expect it. But when we allow people to take care of themselves, we're there, we're friendly, we're warm, we bring them dinner, we do those kinds of things, but we don't take it all on, then everyone benefits because everyone gets stronger. So, a wonderful shamanic trick for you is to find pickup sticks. And short of that, <laughs> toothpicks work. So, find 10 toothpicks or 10 pickup sticks. Put them together, drop them onto your table, and then look. Look at them. Do any of them belong to you? You might notice that maybe one, two, but certainly not all 10. And so, then what I want you to do is don't touch them. Get something, a little piece of paper, or a knife, or something, and push those all right into the trash. Because if you go picking them up again, you're going to handle them. So don't do that. Just let those other people's burdens be their burdens. They won't love you any less for, um, for not doing that. They'll even love you more because you were there for them, but you didn't do it for them. So... There you go, Amy. Jeff, this one is for you. Oh, the party card of the entire tarot, the Three of Cups. So it's summer. It's time to celebrate life. And this is true for all of us, no matter what is going on out there. Your own personal happiness and well-being comes from, first of all, being in the sun, taking some time for yourself, finding what is it that makes you happy. Do more of that. And this card, um, this is a wonderful card for the summer. What a what a great midsummer card. Uh, so. Jeff, if you haven't thrown a party, um, I highly recommend that you do. And then uh, let me know where and when. Thanks. Gulam, this one is for you. Uh, the Queen of Cups. So look at her. She is fixated on her cups. She has little cupids down here. But the thing is that she is also very able to handle whatever comes at her because she has a hold of her cup and she can take care of things emotionally she doesn't get knocked off center and you can see i'm going to put it way up close here uh there you go see all this down at the bottom all these pebbles she's very close to the water but she's not in it which means she can handle her emotions and not get knocked off center beautiful card all right, Chris, this one is for you. Ah, the Queen of Pentacles. We have a run on queens. So this queen is also pretty fixated on her pentacle. Um, she has ram energy, Aries, right, he, um, right here. And she also has Taurus energy right here, the bull. So it's all about the physical, practical world and knowing how to deal with it and how to handle it. 
from a feminine perspective because she's the queen that's bringing you this information and she has everything at her disposal there is nothing she doesn't have access to so a while back i was thinking about well i needed this you know oh i think it was uh, i needed oh <laughs> this was a few years ago so what i my intentional life was i wanted um a villa in spain and mexico and um i wanted to go to morocco and then um i, I sent this in november Along about January, I remembered that I have a timeshare, and that timeshare is international. I have a villa in Spain, Morocco, and Mexico. I don't need to own it. I only need access. So think about that. You know, you don't have to have things. You only need access to them. So there you go. Jeff, you are so welcome. Hi, Judy. Hi, Nancy. Hey, Keely. Oh, ooh, I'm going way over here for yours. Ah, oh. <laughs> so major arcana. This is the everything is going to be all right. Your problems are no bigger than a small child on a small pony. And how do I know they're going to be all right? Look at the sunflowers back there. And look at this little person riding that pony. Carefree, naked absolutely everything bared to the wind and still everything is going to be all right what a beautiful card so like i said earlier when you see these cards um, and they have impact on you and sometimes you let me know that they do then find it online enlarge it in black and white and color it there's something very meditative you don't have to color it exactly as you see it here it's your card and, and then you can use these to meditate on, especially when they're major arcana, because it's um, divinity attempting to get a message. Um, I'm just the conduit. So there you go. All right. Coral, this one is for you. Oh, you're at a crossroads. Um, wands, passion, fire, drive, connection to the divine. You've already made the decision. And you know you have, but you haven't maybe told yourself yet. We do that. Um, and you're still crystal gazing. See right here? Yeah. You want someone else to affirm that the decision that you have made is uh, accurate. So do you have um, a spirit guide? Do you have a power animal? Do you have, well, I already know you have angels. Everyone has angels. We can't get away without having angels. Um, but do you, are you connecting with them? And you can ask, you know, you can ask for guidance. And then, I was talking about this earlier. So then ask, listen, and act. There's no point in them giving you guidance if all you do is go, well, you know, I heard this thing, or I thought about that, and I was thinking about this, and I saw that, and then you don't do anything with it. Then there's no, um, uh, there's no reason for them to continue to give you guidance when you're not really using it. So um, ask, listen, act. There you go. Carol, this one is for you the emperor so the beautiful thing about the emperor is lots of aries energy independent action however he comes from love look at that his scepter is all about love but he'll also go out there and beat him up for you he is willing able and ready to take action on your behalf the thing about the um about the emperor it's no knowing when to growl and when to bite you don't always have to go into warrior mode um it's a, you know it's a sit back and and assess the situation okay so that's your gift tonight is sit back and um, assess the situation carol this one is for you the high priestess so 
um, sitting between two towers of good and evil, an equidistant cross on her heart. Um, and at her feet down here, she has the moon. So her emotions are firmly in control. Um, and she acts from the Torah, the book of wisdom. So she is able to manifest amazing things. And, um, and what I would say is that um, use her guidance, work with her for a while. Um, and the same thing is true for, for all of us. When we get a card that, and it, particularly it speaks to you, if it doesn't like really speak to you, then you know, it's not, it's n not that imperative. But when you see one that speaks to you, you know, like mine is a, the high priestess, my number is two, my master number is 11. I work with the high priestess a lot. I work with Isis a lot, rebirthing. And so begin to work with these cards, even for a week, you know, get this card out, look at it. What does it mean to you? What does the high priestess mean? And how are you going to emulate that in your life? So there you go. Galena, this one is for you. Oh, it's time for you to give it a rest. You've been overanalyzing, overthinking, and um, hmm, let's see what else. Uh, <laughs> so give it a rest. Um, stop and oh, stop talking about it, whatever it is. That's just like hmm, not talking about that anymore. There you go. Torah, this one is for you. The tower necessary destruction for positive reconstruction. Now, I am not a 100% positive, but I have a sneaking suspicion that you've seen this card before. This is the card from which the phoenix rises. So if you've been going through it and you've been um, um, banging your head, not knowing what to do, um, all kinds of um, back and forth, then just stop for a moment. Just stop and give it a rest because what's happening is the deconstruction, the decomposting is going to bring forth gifts that you can't imagine yet, Torah. So um, just for a bit, um, yeah, just for a bit, when it happens that you're like, ah, just go, you know, hmm, something good is coming. So there you go. Sarah, this one is for you. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, the page of cups. Cups are emotions, water, um, fluidity, mutability, the ability to open your heart. There is something from the subconscious coming to be healed. There is no way that it will not be healed on account of <laughs> it's jumping. It can't stay in the cup. It's from the water. It will want to go back into the water. So something from the subconscious is coming forward for you. So there you go. All right. You're welcome, Carol. Hi, Fred. Hey, Esther. All right. Tora, you're welcome. I just love to um, see your post and watch you grow. It's beautiful. Very nice. Monica, the king of pentacles. So what we know about pentacles is their money and property and tangible things. And I love that just as I'm talking about this, there's a Jeep going by and, <laughs> and going out onto the street. So um, there's movement here. He also comes from... Uh, he comes from Venus. He comes from his heart. So he's a powerful king. Utilize your masculine energies coming from the heart and manifesting in the practical world. So there you go. Nunyan, this one is for you. Ah, you, my dear, are self-sacrificing. So you don't need to do it. It's not that you can't. I mean, I'm going to put this up there. See the nimbus around um, this person's head? It's, um, it's like they're saintly and they're doing it. But is it benefiting you? Because when the hanged man comes up, I know that you're, you're doing some sacrificing. 
Okay. And is it in your best interest? And that's just a great question that you get to ask yourself. First of all, what am I sacrificing in myself? What of myself am I sacrificing? Second of all, is it serving me? And then that's a beautiful place for you to, um, to be able to benefit from this card. So there you go. Hanged man. All right, Judy, this one is for you. Mm, conflict in the mental realm. Um, so there has been conflict. Um, you can also see that there's swords on the ground. There's dejected people walking away. The person who appears to have uh, come through it or maybe is just the um, guardian of the swords is picking up. And of the five swords or thoughts and ideas, of the five things that you're thinking, only two of them are worth picking up. The rest of them, two of them for sure, just leave them laying, and one is a maybe. So sometimes when things are in conflict in our lives, it's a really good time to just sit and go, wait a minute. It's not that what am I thinking thing, but it is kind of that what am I thinking thing. And get your priorities figured out. You know, I talk about non-negotiables and most people don't think about that. They don't think what are my non-negotiables? What is my absolute bottom line? But figuring out your non-negotiables is a really, really wonderful practice. So I encourage you to um, just take a little time and do that. I encourage all of us to do that. So there you go. Um, so Tracy, hi, Dawn, hi. And Adrian, nice to see you. Oh, Chelsea, uh, thanks for the comment on my hair. My daughter, isn't she amazing? Does great stuff with my hair when I get to see her. So I just got back from Canada because it was my birthday. Y'all heard about that. Okay, Nancy, this one is for you. The meeting of two emotional equals. And there's going to be a healing because there's the Carducius in the middle there. And it's going to be, um, there's going to be Leo energy in it, big energy, but from a place of um, hmm, upliftment. Yeah, yeah. So watch for this. And oftentimes when I see this card, what I say is that it's a balance of of the feminine and the masculine energies within. And years ago, um, when I started my shamanic work and when I got in touch with the idea that there was both a masculine and a feminine even here, I started looking at um, I started looking at my own masculine and I found out that um, I think I was like, I don't know, 37, 47, something like that. But my, my masculine, my own masculine was a baby. So I had to grow this baby up fast so that it could match me. So if you find that you're out of balance with your own feminine and your own masculine, do that healing. Um, but also look out into the world for a meeting of um, two emotional equals. It feels like the internal work is almost done and now it's ready to turn it out into the world. So, um, and I think you asked about how you could turn something about a career. Oh, there you go. So when, and this is just going to come through, when your masculine and your feminine is in balance, your heart is at peace. And the fulfillment of having a peaceful heart is the most important purpose. There are many ways to fulfill the desire and the need for practical world things, money, um, tangible things. But when the heart is in balance and the energy goes out, all else falls into place. So there you go, Nancy. Thanks for the question, by the way. And, you know, if you have specific questions, just you can pop them up there. Um, I'll do best with my little readers to see them. So there you go. Chelsea Largent, this one is for you. Woo, you go, girl. So a brand new beginning of cups, mm, love. Uh, overflowing love, bringing things into balance love, um, 
often it's a new relationship, but sometimes a new relationship, just like with the two of cups, is an internal thing. So first we have um, a love of ourselves, then we're able to take that out into the world. But yours is a gift from the gods overflowing all over the place. So there you go. What a beautiful card for you. How nice. Um, Keith, this one is for you. Hard work is done <laughs> you're putting the finishing touches on whatever it is that you've been working on in the practical world and um if you think about um oh if you think about being so proud of things that you can hang them on the wall and what the number eight brings into, um, into view, then what you can find is that there's a lot of power in this card and the work is complete. And are you ready to bring it out into the world? That would be a question that I would love to know about. Sandra, this one is for you. Temperance. Always take the higher road. Bring things into spiritual balance. You have angelic help. And so ask for it. They're waiting for you. So there you go. Cherry, this one is for you. All right. When I see this card, <laughs> what I um, wonder is what kind of beliefs were you given as a child that aren't serving you anymore? Because we were all given those cups, um, our emotions, water, fluidity. And this is the six. This is about bringing things into balance. So as we grow, we learn that the gifts that beliefs that we were given as children don't fit anymore. So now it's time for you to go, oh, you know what, that, that's uh, not to, that doesn't fit anymore. And so I get to have a new belief. So there you go for that. So Fred, this one is for you. Justice. It's about bringing things into balance and cleaving away, taking away anything that, um, that makes these scales be out of balance. Um, the sword is useful because it's a mental realm. The, um, the, we see the same, whoops, there they are, the same scales in the, the Six of Pentacles when they're being um, asked to keep things in balance. What's the flow? So are there things that you can cleave away, cut away, um, that will bring things more into balance? And also um, be, be willing to listen fairly um, and know that, you know, this person has this gift that they're bringing and that person has that gift that they're bringing. Where does it, where does it come more into balance for them and for you? So there you go. Justice. Beautiful. Esther, this one is for you. Pentacles. You might be holding on too tight. I'm going to put it up there. Um, the person has a, um, everything that they need and yet there's um the ability oh and the um uh the ability to take care of everything but it's important that you put things into flow so don't hold on so tightly that there's no flow going on there esther tracy this one is for you the queen of swords i love the queen of swords what i love about her is first of all she's got a little cupid here she's got a butterfly here it's all about transformation so what she's saying is I have this idea and we're going in this direction. So watch for the ideas and then when you get them, take action. You know, earlier I was talking about ask, listen, and act. So you're, she's willing because she's got the ideas. So you've already asked. Now listen, listen for them and then be willing to take action on them. Dawn, this one's for you. Six of Swords. So what this says is you've come out of some chaos over here. You're on your way to peace and harmony. The ways that you've been thinking may not have benefited you because you're coming out of the chaos. But don't disrupt the thinking yet. 
um, when you get to the other side over here, then it'll be time to let that thinking go. And you might just be talking to yourself about, oh, so what kind of stinking thinking have I been doing? <laughs> and there, there you go. That'll be interesting for you to, um, to think about. Adrian, this one is for you. Oh, a brand new beginning of the way that you're thinking about things. And so it's going to, I just have this feeling that it's going to benefit you greatly and that it's going to, um, yeah. So um, these little symbols down here, I probably ought to know this, but I don't. So these little um, symbols down there, they're called Yod, Y-O-D. So look them up. They are part of the Jewish alphabet and they'll bring some meaning to you. So Bridget, this one is for you. What this says is use all of your senses. Don't rely on what you see. Um, and to go out and check the moon, because I think you'll find that the moon is exactly in this position tonight. And so this is irrelevant for you right now. So taste things, smell things, touch things. Um, use all of your senses. And even more than that, use your intuition. So I have a wonderful course. It's called Deepen Your Intuition. And uh, I'm going to start uh, doing some teaching um, in the next couple of weeks. So look for that. Blessings, everyone. Thanks for joining me. Have a wonderful evening. Bliss. Bye-bye.